So a brand new study that was just released from Oxford Economics reveals the state of the creator economy and gives us some insights about what it really takes to go full time on YouTube right now, how practical YouTube can be as a job. And there's a lot of data in here for aspiring content creators, established channels and business owners that are thinking about tapping into the power of YouTube. Is it relevant? Is that a good investment of your time and your energy? We're going to go through all of the highlights from this study in this video. And so I'm excited to dive into it. But if we're just meeting, my name is Sean Cannell, Rhymes with YouTube channel, and I'm on a mission to help people learn how to build their influence with YouTube. And I'm excited to talk about this brand new study that really is summarized data from 2022, but all of the trends it just dropped yesterday, but all of the trends that we're seeing is these numbers continue to go up even in 2023. And this is going to be sharing details with us about full-time creators and how much YouTube influences the American uh, GDP, the global domestic product, how much money is being generated. To be clear, this Oxford economics study is about the United States. It would seem that all the data is from the U.S., and you can see a link to the study if you're watching this on YouTube in the description. And um, this is kind of the headline of it. There's a full summary and a deep dive full report PDF that is downloadable. And I recommend checking that out. But all you got to do is hang out with me here and I will give you some very surprising headlights, uh, uh, highlights and a few takeaways as we um, conclude the video as well. So definitely watch until the end. So in 2022, billions of people came to YouTube to learn new skills, connect with others, and find life-enriching content. They're highlighting Gracie's Corner here, which as a dad of a two-and-a-half-year-old, man, we are bumping Gracie's Corner, by the way. What a great channel. But um, in this study, a lot of insights are broken down, and here's a couple of the big headlines. So YouTube's creative ecosystem contributed over $35 billion to the U.S. global domestic product in 2022, 35 billion dollars of economic stimulus package, and stick with me because there's actually a very interesting breakdown of exactly where that money's flowing into your pockets, into different, into camera creators and camera companies. YouTube is stimulating the entire economy now. YouTube's creative ecosystem supported more than 390,000 full-time equivalent jobs in the US. And so of course, uh, Oxford Economics did this study. That would be reverse engineering that somehow you're making a full-time living off YouTube. We talk about here, there's so many different ways to actually make a living off of YouTube, right? It could be that you're actually a creator, you work for a creator, you're a freelancer, your business maybe is supported. Like there's a lot of different ways to make a full-time living. But 390,000 jobs, you know, one of the things that people ask us a lot is, you know, I'm trying to explain that I want to do this to a family member or a spouse that doesn't understand a report like this can be really helpful to look at some of the practical data when it comes to the creator economy. If you're finding this information interesting as well, can you smash the like button? That would be helpful. But this is a platform for creators. And in the US, over 55,000 channels have more than 100,000 subscribers as of December 2022. That is an increase of more than 15% year over year. Okay, 55,000 channels have a silver play button just in the US. By the way, the global opportunity of YouTube is very real, but this particular report is just giving us US numbers. And so that's an increase of 15% year over year. Now, we don't know what's gonna happen this year, but if you're paying attention to the data, YouTube continues to grow. So we could guess that that's going to be another 15% or perhaps more. Anything could happen, but pretty cool, right? There's This is a growing opportunity. And 100,000 subscribers is incredibly significant. One of the things we oftentimes talk about as well, we have so many students and people that are part of, you know, like our video ranking academy community that 
are crushing it with 5,000 subs, 10,000 subs, depending on the business model. But man, when you hit 100,000, things get really interesting. And 55,000 channels in the US alone have done that. Now, in the US, over 6,500 channels had more than 1 million subscribers as of December 2022. That's also an increase of more than 15%. Huge numbers. A million's a wild milestone, right? And so that's pretty significant for that level of scale. So how are people earning money from YouTube? Well, it gives us 10 ways that YouTube alone gives creators for an opportunity to make YouTube, to make money. Now, you probably know about ads. Once you get monetized, 1,000 subscribers, 4,000 hours of watch time, you can apply for the YouTube Partner Program, 10 million shorts views, 1,000 subscribers, you can apply for the YouTube Partner Program. YouTube Premium, once you're in the YPP, is if, like, I'm a YouTube Premium user, are you? Do you pay for YouTube Premium? Is it worth it? I think it is just to miss out on ads. I need to tap more into YouTube Music. I'm also a Spotify subscriber, but ultimately, YouTube Premium revenue goes to you if you're monetized. Fractionally, somehow they figure that out. And then ad revenue, of course, goes to you. But this isn't a surprise. Let's go through the other ways. That's that's two ways. An additional four ways is fan funding, channel memberships, super chat, super stickers, super thanks. And, um, you know, these are channel memberships subscribe to. We don't actually have that set up, but you could you could subscribe for exclusive content. Super stickers, you could do it during live chat. Super thanks, you can just give a tip basically in the comments of a video. Super chat typically during a live stream like this. And then YouTube platform also provides for other ways. You're shopping, ticket sales, if you're a musician of some time or you want to do a meetup, funds to support specific groups of creators, and brand connect to facilitate branded content campaigns. If your channel is large enough, you get an invite in the back end of your YouTube studio for brand connect, and then brand deals can flow to you from basically your YouTube studio. So that's 10 ways that YouTube allows creators to monetize. Then this report highlighted that building a profile on YouTube can help creators earn money outside of the platform, brand deals and sponsorship agreements, sales through their own websites and businesses and live appearances. And this is actually one of the things we're most passionate about here at Think Media and why we see a lot of small channels earn big money because you use your YouTube channel basically for awareness, but you make money off platform. And they're, I don't think they're giving this enough emphasis, but this is of course true as well. And so these stats are wild. YouTube creates economic impact in the US economy. So in the US, more than 430,000 creators and partners receive income linked to their YouTube presence. So you what you're wondering what is the data how many people are making money how many people are monetized 430,000 creators in the US are earning i would assume at least $1 from the YouTube partner program and so they've qualified for those metrics and that was the number again i think by the end of 2022 one in 3 creators in the US earn money that earn money from YouTube agree that YouTube is their primary source of revenue. So part-time versus full-time, many people earning money from YouTube ad revenue, but you have other sources of revenue. Or part-time versus full-time, maybe you're full-time, but you're not relying on YouTube ad revenue alone. More than 160,000 creators and partners in the US employ other people to work on their YouTube channel. Wow, pretty wild. So 160,000 creators. Now I want you to think about this too. One of the things we oftentimes talk about is what if your way of going full-time or as your stepping stone of building skills was to work for another YouTube creator? Oh, Sean, there's not that many opportunities. Well, apparently 160,000 creators alone or channels alone in the US ultimately are 
employing others. And so pretty wild. Let me know which of these stats is your favorite or if any of this is surprising. And the next one is over 40,000 channels in the U.S. earned money from alternative monetization products in the month of June 2022 alone, which is an increase of over 30% from the prior year. So what I'm assuming this means is many monetized channels are, of course, making money with ads, but a lot of people haven't tapped into Super Chat, Super Stickers. And so of the uh, 430,000 in the U.S. that are making money from the partner program, 40,000 in one month, June 2022, we're tapping into other stuff. I think shopping, by the way, was probably merch as well. Like, for example, you can get Think Media merch, which is like a shopping shelf. We're going to be dropping some new designs, but uh, different alternative ways than just YouTube ads. And so I've got a lot more to share with you, but I'm curious, what do you think so far about these stats? Anything surprising to you? And I also want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, StreamYard. Um, you could go to streamwiththink.com to get a 14-day free trial of StreamYard. This very software right here is StreamYard. And I love it because even this very study dropped yesterday. I researched today. I scheduled this upload. I did the thumbnail in Canva. I typed in everything. I put it to Facebook. I put it to YouTube. And here I am live with you right now. It's very easy to use. It's web-based. And so I'm a personal fan of StreamYard. Absolutely love it. And if you want to check it out, it's also very cool for interviewing people, bringing on guests or collaborating and doing like video podcasts with their perfect record features. So you don't even have to go live. You could basically just bring someone on or do a solo round. It hosts that recording on the cloud. So especially if you're an entrepreneur or business owner, a lot of times I'll use perfect record now where I'll just do a solo round and then I just send the link from the from the cloud that StreamYard hosts to an editor and then boom, you're off to the races. Or if you're on a side hustle, you're a content creator, definitely worth checking out. So at least play around with it. Free trial, 14 days, streamwiththink.com, smash like if you're getting value. If you have any questions or thoughts, then um, put four questions before it. I got a bunch more. In fact, this next slide is wild. I'm going to share this with you. But Benjamin says, my aha is to grow a business and how to make money online through social media, including marketing and network. Amazing. Hello from the Philippines. Good to see you, Robert. Good to see everybody hanging out here. And thanks for being here for this live stream. We we're talking about a brand new study from Oxford Economics that is revealing the state of the creator economy, how many full-time jobs YouTube is responsible for creating in the US alone. If you're just joining, definitely check out the replay. And Artistic Dragonborn says, it's definitely interesting and good knowledge. So let's dive into this. This is kind of crazy. So here's how YouTube's creative ecosystem impacts the wider economy. So starting in the upper left in the blue modules, so content revenues are paid by YouTube, ads, YouTube premium, and fan funding to the creator. The direct impact <clears throat> is that money that YouTube pays out is a source of wages and profits for the creators. You someday may aspire to be a full-time creator. You're earning the wages and profits. And... The government taxes you, so that can contributes to new revenue generated. YouTube, owned by Alphabet, owned by Google, um, pays creators, and it also supports jobs amongst creators and their staff to the tune of 160,000 channels employing other people. Then it's the indirect impact, and this is one of the things when someone defines what the creator economy is, the creator economy itself we pay for Adobe Creative Cloud subscriptions. Now we're paying for all these AI tools. We're buying cameras. I bought a Sony camera. I bought a Sigma lens. I bought a Shure microphone. I bought a Rodecaster, right? So the creator economy is all kinds of different ways of making money and uh, generating money. And so that's this next one. Many creators purchase other goods and services to run their YouTube channel, filming equipment, props, editing services, 
support services such as accounting or legal advice. This makes an indirect contribution to the economy. Think Media is a multi-million dollar business and we got lawyer that reviews brand deal contracts, expensive too. We got gear, staff, a PEO, healthcare we're doing, you know, so you start thinking about YouTube and the creator economy at its tipping point, the indirect impact to the economy is wild. And I would say we're a medium sized channel in a lot of ways. So induced impact, there is an induced impact as creators and workers in their supply chain, spend their money in wager wages. That would then make sense. So if you follow the blue four modules up top, then my wife and I go to Chipotle. And when they say, Sean, do you want to add guac to your burrito? It's going to be $2 and 60 cents. I go, give me two scoops. We ball out, man. When I'm with my wife, Chipotle for date night, it's, it's, it's as nice as we get, but, uh, used in our used Ford Explorer. Obviously it's used. I mean, eventually it's used as soon as you drive it off the lot, but we buy used cars, dog. That's what it is, man. Not that it matters, but like purchasing cars, gifts, movie tickets. There's these pictures here, forks and knives. I suppose you actually buy forks and knives at target, you know, and, uh, you also use a fork and knife at sushi. And so uh, whatever these shopping bags, so the money, of course, the fact that this is a real career and real jobs and real income. And then through if your team or anybody that works for you. So it's a lot of money. And so it's 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 kind of also proving this point where people might argue, is YouTube really beneficial? Is it helpful? What about certain types of content? Great. We could debate it all day long. But in terms of the GDP, in terms of the American dream, in terms of giving people jobs and people being able to feed their family and feed their kids, it's pretty wild to see this perspective. And that's part of this whole report, which was, by the way, linked in the description in terms of the impact of YouTube. Okay. Now, down below, it says revenue source from other income. So brand sponsorships, creators of selling their own stuff. Like we have our own course, our own event coming back. 2024 is our event called Grow With Video happening in Las Vegas. So YouTube creators are doing all kinds of things. Mr. Beast has got a chocolate bar, a restaurant that produces income. And then it says here in the center, catalytic impact. The other income that YouTube helps creators earn supports a further round of direct, indirect, and induced impacts. Makes sense. And in the lower right-hand corner, this would be, hey, Sean, how does this impact the total us economy this report just came out summarizing 2022 and for the calendar year of 2022 they have attributed i'm sure there's got to be a margin of error for this because there's so many things you you can and can't measure i'm wondering like how do they know my how do they know i went to chipotle and ordered extra guacamole how do they know that my wife did double protein you know double steak on her salad bowl. How'd they know that? But nevertheless, the data is $35 billion contributed to the US GDP and 390,000 full-time equivalent jobs. Summary, the creator economy is booming. Summary, th there's a lot of money in the creator economy directly from YouTube, indirectly on YouTube, off platform, Summary, this next decade is going to be the best decade on YouTube. Summary, it's cool to see real data backing up the hype that it can feel like sometimes people are spewing. We're just looking at the math and uh, it's a good time to go all in on YouTube and build out this stuff. Now, 69% of creators who earn money from YouTube surveyed agree that the revenue they receive from advertisements being placed on their YouTube content is an important source of income for them. This would be monetization. And I would agree with that. I think that some people overestimate YouTube ads. If your channel's not even monetized yet, there's still opportunity to make money. We actually just did a class about that. There's actually a replay going on for it right now. 
at ytmoneyplan.com. On the one hand, there's a there's some new stats talking about how um, YouTube creators revenue has been going down. YouTube ad revenue can be kind of inconsistent. I did a short about it recently. But on the other hand, especially once your channel has some momentum, um, YouTube ad revenue can be a, a very significant source of income. If you're interested in that class, We'll uh, link that up. It's not there yet, but it will be um, at ytmoneyplan.com. I just did a brand new training. I actually go through um, our seven-step system, free, totally free class. I go through this, talk about six different ways to earn money, five of which are not YouTube ads, and go through some case studies and examples. If that sounds valuable to you, definitely check it out. But over time, you know, YouTube ad revenue... Think media, it's close to a half a million dollars a year right now in terms of just this one channel. That is very important. I mean, that's how we are able to hire a staff, employ people, have multiple creators on this channel. And so over time, there's no question. YouTube is the greatest platform for earning money directly, better than TikTok, the Reels, and Facebook and Instagram reels bonus or or income that they, they got rid of that and so earning income on any other platform is inconsistent at best and the numbers are very low youtube is the greatest in terms of direct monetization on long form videos and so not a surprising stat um okay is youtube relevant for small and medium sized businesses we can't cover the whole report, but here's another piece of it that I thought was very interesting. And the first thing was 83% of small and medium-sized businesses with a YouTube channel agree that YouTube played a role in helping them grow their customer base by reaching new audiences. Wild. So takeaway, should your business be on YouTube? Yes. And for the businesses that are serious and have started channels, eight out of 10 agree that YouTube is helpful for reaching new customers and reaching new audiences. 78% use YouTube, agree that YouTube is essential to their business growth. 83% of businesses with a YouTube channel agree that YouTube has helped them develop a following in their local area. Wow. A lot of times my advice for business owners is that YouTube is, is not super helpful for local and that most business owners, it's not that they shouldn't do YouTube, but it's that they should do YouTube with a wider approach. Like we go to this place called Leavenworth, Washington, my wife and I eat most holidays. And it's one of the, it's a very touristy town, lots of little shops. And so during the holidays, it's crazy. During certain times in summer, it's crazy. But then it's, you could definitely be there where like probably nobody would walk into your shop for five, six, seven days. If I ran a shop like that in Leavenworth, Washington, some of them have two stories. The clearance stuff is upstairs. What I would do is I'd put a little chain that says employees only. And I would make the upstairs or I'd make a corner of my shop a YouTube studio. And I would start a show, I'd start a video podcast, I'd start a YouTube studio. And then what I would start doing is e-commerce or product reviews. But here's what is the crazy thought. See, a lot of shops think, oh, I don't want to disrupt my local business. Well, everyone coming into your local business, they don't even know you have a channel. Meanwhile, if you were talking about little angel Christian figurines, what are those things called? Remember those? Like nice little angels that look like stone that's polished. If you just talked about those and you're like, yeah, you know, hey, meet us in Leavenworth, Washington, or just click the links in the description down below, it might be the best opportunity for you to just click to an affiliate link on Amazon. This is so outside of the average small business owner's thinking, but th the opportunity would be you're creating content. You ain't got nothing to do anyways because it's a slow tourist week. And so you might as well just go make videos, you know, upstairs or in the corner. You start getting ad revenue. You start like, sharing tips or whatever and about home decor fashion tips there's these different fashion stores and then 
as a result though, perhaps the channel grows larger and now people, when they come in are like, oh my gosh, I subscribed to your YouTube channel. Like it's so cool to meet you in person. And there's the local impact as well. So oftentimes wonder like, is there gonna be enough local impact? If all you wanna do is get customers. Now the flip side is YouTube ads. You can target zip codes. So I'm not sure what they fully mean by this, but um, 83% of businesses with the YouTube channel agree. YouTube's helped them develop a following in their local area. And that just says YouTube channel, it doesn't even say YouTube ads. So uh, awesome. Okay. Tools for training. 80, this one's wild too. 80% of SMB, small to medium sized businesses who use YouTube, agree that YouTube is a cost effective way of providing staff training. Wow. And there was a quote inside of this. There's some cool stories and case studies inside of this. But they were talking about how using YouTube, and I wonder if they're talking about using YouTube, but just other people's content. Like you hire somebody that you want to help you in an admin role and you don't have time to train them. You're like, so, hey, nice to meet you. You're hired, watch YouTube. Or perhaps you're uploading content so that you can scale the training of your staff. And eight out of 10 small to medium sized businesses agree with that. I mean, cost effective, it's a free way if, you know, like for a lot of things and the, the Think Media staff definitely watches YouTube to learn things. And so uh, what do you think about these uh, highlights so far? If you've been getting value, hit like. And if you um, have any questions, let me know a couple question marks before and after. But what we're talking about is this study from Oxford Economics and from Opportunity to Impact. And you can see the full report as well as just a summary of it. And we'll link that up in the description down below. But YouTube is fueling the economy. And this study is best based in the US. $35 billion contributed to the US GDP in 2022. And 390,000 full-time jobs added to the US uh, economy. 390,000. And that's going to be... I believe creators earning money off of YouTube and being a full-time YouTube creator, or just the fact that you can, you can work in the creator economy in a lot of different ways. And what would you be willing to do if you love online video? Would you be willing to have it look maybe different? Cause you're like, I just want to be at home talking to a microphone and make a full-time living. Well, cool. We encourage that. But before you get there, perhaps you work in a different role in the creator economy. You know, it's kind of wild is we just did an interview in the, our video ranking academy. Every month we do this thing called the VRA show. And we were talking to Monzon Media and he just got hired at, I'll tell you the app, it's a pretty cool social media app, playground.ai. So he right now is a full-time YouTube creator for another YouTube channel that pays him to make right here to to make the videos for their new AI app so he has his own channel but he wasn't full time there got hired by a software company to make videos for their new AI app and you think about even just AI alone are you using AI yet do you have any favorite AI tools AI is blowing up. There's lots of money flowing into AI. There's new startups. There's new SaaS software as a service companies. And they got all this venture capital. They got these dollars. And you love making videos. Imagine going full-time, being hired by another person's YouTube channel or a company's YouTube channel. So the creator economy in this Oxford economics report is pretty incredible showing how practical this is and how much opportunity opportunity there is right now for us as content creators but it might look different than you think and so uh robert says loving the info going to pull the trigger on the viral video package 
Awesome, Robert. Appreciate you. And thanks so much for being here. If you're getting value out of this, smash like. Um, Patron Patrol Nation said went full time this year. It's going well. Congratulations. It's awesome to hear. So grateful for this community. I use ChatGPT in mid journey. It's awesome. It's like having two extra employees on payroll that do exactly what I tell them to do. Powerful insight and statement that you're making there. Construction cronies. AI is definitely very powerful. Question, what if you produce long form content like art lectures? It's a great type of content to produce and long form pays the best. A lot better, anywhere from about $1.50 to over $30. Business Insider just did one report. Per 1,000 views, that's RPM, whereas shorts is four to six cents. Shorts is crazy low in terms of revenue. Christian Rocker, are TV and movie reaction channels like mine able to be profitable enough for full time? 100%. TV and reaction channels are great. Last night, after I caught up on the most recent episode of Succession, kind of a scary show as I'm raising my sons, I'm like, I hope I hope we could do a little bit better than this. Uh, but interesting show, right? I watched um, you know, season eight, episode eight or whatever recap ending explained, not even cause I was confused cause I just wanted to get other insights from a, a content creator. So when I think about the long tail of shows, episodes, star Wars, Mandalorian, you know, niches, Lord of the Rings prime, like all this, you know, different stuff, the Lord of the Rings prime, Amazon prime show, very good niche competitive, just like anything, but make great content and perhaps find those niche obscure things. What always surprises me is when there's a, there's still a lot of things that are uncovered. They're not covered. And so I can't remember what it was. Now, mind you, it was like right after it came out, but you know, what's fire right now. Silo. Are you watching silo? I read all the silo books, Hugh Howie, independent author. Now the, the show is out on Apple. Now, to be fair, I think the episodes dropped and I wanted to like look at Easter eggs and stuff. And it might have only been out for a couple hours and there was nothing on YouTube yet. Fair enough, because like you had to watch them. But you know what it revealed to me? Who's willing to hustle? Who's willing to like, okay, the show's going to drop. I'm going to watch it. As I'm watching it, I'm going to take notes. I'm going to flip my camera on. I'm going to, you know, record. I'm going to drop some of the summary. Because you're really in, you know, and then one, two, three, four hours after the show's over, you get to YouTube first. For everybody complaining about it's too hard to grow and there's too much competition, I want to challenge you. If you're just starting and trying to break through the noise, you got to be willing to do what others won't. See, someone gets established and they're like, I'm going to make my silo video, you know, tomorrow. I know the episodes drop tonight, but like, I just want to enjoy it first. Well, they have the privilege of doing that because their channel is established. They have subscribers, so people are going to watch the videos anyways. But if you're an upstart, you're trying to break through, don't be complaining in my comments if you're not willing to stay up all night or a little bit extra and put in some extra work to drop me the silo ending explained and Easter egg video. Thank you. Jenny says, I have a haul and DIY channel monetized. My second is it, but my audience wants everything on one. My second is all about me in life. Oh, that's a tough one, Jenny. Um, there's your audience, but there's the people that don't know you. And for reaching the people that don't know you, you may want to stay niched down, realizing that your channel today is just a fraction of what your channel tomorrow will be if you do YouTube, right? So if you let, you can let me know like how big is your channel, but I just might keep doing what you're doing use community tab to maybe cross promote a little bit. Um, but you should never upload videos. Your subscribers didn't subscribe for that's the rule. You know, when to break it, like we certainly break it. Cause it's like, shoot, you might not have wanted a final cut tutorial and we're going to upload a final cut tutorial on this channel, but nevertheless, it's the best tips and tools for creators. But if I all of a sudden started uploading vlogs, you might be like, that's kind of cool. But like a lot of people be like, no, bro, that's, that's not what we asked for. So there is, it's very important to listen to your audience, but it's also important to have a, the bigger vision and you're only getting feedback from the people that are there now. 
What about the next 50,000 to 100,000 subscribers that don't know you yet that may just want to watch your DIY and haul videos and at times then be educated about your more vlog lifestyle stuff? That'd be my take. Hey, if you're getting value, smash like and check out the replay for all of the data from this Oxford, Oxford economics report. Um, we're taking a few questions right here and, um, Jonathan, I appreciate the love, man. Thank you so much for being here and being a part of our community. Um, Ryland says I've got close to 10,000 subs, 250. I've got close to 10,000 subs, 2,500 email subs. Debating on an online course that's pretty robust or a simpler product tutorial course thoughts. I do the simpler first because the sooner you can get it done into market is the sooner you could have some revenue that you can reinvest into scaling. And it's also the other thing is the sooner you can get a product to market good enough to honor the customer. But there's a great quote from the founder of LinkedIn that says, if you're not embarrassed by version 1.0 of your product, you waited too long to launch it. You want to get version 1.0 into the hands of the people you serve as early as possible. Like for example, our online course video ranking Academy is on like version four or five. Now we re-record it. And so it's been updated. The first version was good and solid but it, it was nowhere near as polished as it is today. And then as YouTube continues to evolve, we continue to update it. So you want to get version one done as soon as possible. And in software, they say like software usually comes out and it has bugs. See, too many people are afraid like, oh, it needs to be perfect. It'll never be perfect. It's done is better than perfect. However, done. And then you're updating it as you go. Meaning you might say, hey, I'm excited because I'm launching my online course. You can get a massive discount because I want to hook you up with version 1.0. I'm actually going to be doing a focus group for eight weeks. And then you're going to save a ton of money because you're going to be there to give me feedback, get that version into people's hands at a massive discount. Get the insights as your community are going through it with you, maybe a cohort as you're starting. And then record 2.0 and raise the price five or 10 times because now you kind of had people got a discount. They got to be with you. It was a whole different era. And so too many people lock themselves in a room and sit down to like record their entire thing. And they launch way too late. They don't get something to market that not number one gets some money coming in, but number two gets the user feedback. That's what you need. You want, you want version 1.0 so people can actually critique it even and say, this would be better and da, 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 da. Then it actually makes it even better in the long term, and uh, that's what I would—that's what I would think. Landing the plane on Ryland, great thoughts. Is it frowned upon to include a few videos in an online course that are already public? I don't think so because, so long as there's a lot more robustness there, it's the convenience of the step-by-step -step plus probably the workbook, eighty page, the PDFs you know, perhaps the exclusive community that people get to be a part of. So a few public videos is one piece of, I think, a great offer. So good questions, Rylan. Appreciate you. Um, listen, smash like if you're getting value and I appreciate you being here today. Um, check out the replay of this video if you're just joining. It's all about this Oxford, Oxford economic study. And there's a link in the description. I do recommend reading this if you're a serious creator because there's a lot of very interesting insights and I wasn't even able to cover all of them. But if you're just joining, head back and check all of those out. I appreciate all the questions that came in. I look forward to doing a future Q&A in the future. If you enjoy videos like this, definitely hit the like button. So grateful for that and appreciate you for being a part of our community. And then click or tap the screen to check out my most recent episode of the Think Media podcast. If you didn't know, we release an audio and video podcast two times a week, and uh, you're going to love the content over, over there. It'll help you grow your YouTube channel faster. And in the meantime, my name is Sean Cannell, rhymes with YouTube channel. We will talk soon. Appreciate you.